On October 15, 1860, during the presidential campaign, an 11-year-old girl from a small hamlet in western New York wrote to the Republican candidate expressing her concern over his appearance, which she was afraid might have a bad effect on the voters in the forthcoming election. The campaign photographs of Lincoln were a disappointment to her. She suggested that his appearance would be improved if he wore whiskers. Thus, the image by which several generations have known the Emancipator was sculptured in a child's mind. When he went east to Washington in February, Lincoln's train stopped at Westfield between Erie and Buffalo. When Lincoln appeared to speak a few words to the assembled people, the whiskers already were in evidence. He asked if his little correspondent, Grace Bedell, were present. She was. He asked her to come forward and then placed a fatherly kiss on her cheek. The first reading of the Emancipation Proclamation was painted by Francis B. Carpenter in 1864 during a six months period he spent in the White House for that purpose. It portrays the scene at the moment Lincoln has finished reading to his assembled cabinet members the draft of his proposed Emancipation Proclamation. Each of the personages represented in the painting sat for his portrait, and all of the furniture and various objects were sketched and painted from the originals. The portraits from left to right represent Edwin M. Stanton, Secretary of War, Salmon P. Chase, Secretary of the Treasury, Abraham Lincoln, President, Gideon Wells, Secretary of the Navy, Caleb B. Smith, Secretary of the Interior, William H. Seward, Secretary of State, Montgomery Blair, Postmaster General, Edward Bates, Attorney General, reproduced from the original painting in the Capitol. Lincoln's last photograph. It was taken by Alexander Gardner, April 10, 1865, the very day that Lee surrendered his army to Grant at Appomattox Courthouse, and six days before Lincoln's death. Four negatives of Lincoln were made by Gardner at this last sitting.